Good morning. Today I'm actually going to share with you my homemade challah. Super easy, only a little bit of ingredients. And I am going to make actually this introduction super short because I would love you to stay with me step by step because as I go along the way, I'm going to show you the little tips that I have learned. Believe me, making bread is one of the easiest things to do, but it's the one that has a lot of nuances. The temperature of the room is important, the temperature of the water, the salt you use, everything, and even when you use it. Stay with me step by step. I'm gonna share this super humbling, easy recipe of hala, and you know what? This is gonna be a favorite for you, even if you wanna bake it every Friday morning for your family and have it for Shabbat ready, or even if you're just gonna have it and keep it there to send sandwiches to the kids. You're gonna love this recipe. Come on, let's bake. Tip number one, your yeast. If this is the first time that you're actually baking, you can use the quick rice. I don't use this too often, but it's okay. I'm gonna use today the instant dry yeast. This is the, usually the one that I use for hala. It's fast anyways, it doesn't take too long. Another thing, to rice your yeast in the beginning, I don't use sugar. Usually for my cooking, I never use refined sugar, but I use honey. And there's a very simple rule of thumb. Once you find the recipe that you like the, and it calls for the sugar, you just have to double it for the honey. If it asks you for a quarter of a cup of sugar, then you do half a My cup of honey. Secrets. Gonna You're gonna use either walnut oil or um, almond oil. They tend to do the bread super sweet. I have a third of a cup of honey here and I put lukewarm water, okay? So I am going to dissolve the honey with my whisk first. And here is the trick. Remember that the temperature of the water and the temperature of the room, it's what's most important for the yeast to rise. If you don't have a thermometer, I'm gonna tell you how I do it. I just check it with my finger and it's okay. It's not too hot. It's like, you know what? Like if you would put your baby in a bath, it's lukewarm, okay? So then after you're gonna do, you're just gonna throw your yeast, right away dissolve it with your whisk. And here comes the trick, especially if you live in a place that is uh, cold, I'm gonna tell you what I do. We need the temperature to be warm for the yeast. So what I do is I put, I have four burners and I put three of the burners in order to create just an environment that is warm for the yeast. Dissolve it like so, okay? and then put it in the back burner. Obviously, it is not on the back burner, but you're just trying to create an environment for your yeast to be warm. So you put it in the back, and you're just gonna wait for 10 minutes. Now, the flour. This is where things start to get interesting. I really recommend you to use bread flour. That's why it's called bread flour. It's so much better. It has better protein content for your bread. Now, we're gonna use four and a half cups of uh, flour. I wanna tell you, granted, it is always better to weigh your flour when you're making bread. Okay, but let's say you're like me, you don't have the scale right now. What are we gonna do? So we're gonna use the cups of flour, okay? So we're gonna use four and a half cups of flour. And this is also when you're going to mix your salt. There we go. And now have next to you, your colander. This is what you're gonna need. You're gonna have to sift your flour several times. This is where we ask Mother Nature to come and join us in our quest of making bread. And now you're gonna put half a tablespoon of salt. I put Himalayan salt, that's my favorite salt. I'm actually gonna add a little bit more. And then just mix it. Here is my little secret to you. This, I'm just mixing the flour with the salt, right? I'm telling you, this is the part when you say like making bread is one of the most beautiful things to do because it's so simple, but at the same time, I just find it to be spiritual. I love it. So this is what I tell you we can do. You need actually the air that you don't see in order to make your bread better. So this is why we sift the flour. You want all the air to get in between that. You know, if everybody says all the time, like, oh, what's the point of sifting the flour? Look what is happening. This is why we sift the flour. And I sift the flour many, many times, okay? And for you Jewish ladies that are watching this with me, 
this is when I actually see the amount of blessings that we have in the house. And I just love to look at this because I, I just see the spirituality of baking bread everywhere. So sifted four times. Okay, a few minutes after I was sifting this, this is what the yeast looks like. You see all the foaminess? This is what is gonna help us to make the bread just rise. I have my bowl here. I am gently gonna throw it in here. And I'm gonna use some almond oil, a third of a cup of almond oil, and let this be full. I love when it just like, pip, just it runs over a bit. This is how I want my things to be, always running over. Now you are going just to take a wooden spoon and you're just gonna mix. One very important thing is not over mixing your dough, okay? Look how beautiful it is right now. And it feels warm to the touch. You just wanna be always very gentle with your doughs. You don't wanna be very brute with the doughs. This is one of the things that can kill it. And I just wanna tell you a little secret. If you're rushing or something, try not to bake because bread usually doesn't come off well. If you're like rushing, this is the kind of thing that actually gets all your energy. I want you to see how my dough requires a little bit of water. I'm not afraid to put a little bit of water. Let's see what is it that the recipe is calling for. And your dough is going to tell you, give me a little bit more of this or give me a little bit more of that. So you don't want to over mix it the first time. What we're going to do right after this, just hold your dough outside because you're going to give it the first rise use a little bit of the same oil that you used before just to make sure that it's not gonna stick once it rises for the first time there you go then you put your dough we're gonna cover it now i have my hala. i just covered it with a bowl remember so where am I gonna put it to rise for the first two hours? I am going to put mine in the oven. Of course the oven is off, but what we're wanting to do actually is just to make sure that there's not a lot of cold air that this uh, dough can get. So I'm gonna put it two hours in the oven off, or if you're cooking and you have a lot of things in the stove, it's always just good to put it in a place that as a rule is gonna be warm. So we're gonna give it two hours right now to rise and we'll come back to it. So here we are after two hours, we're gonna open it. I'm gonna show you how it looks. We're gonna open this together actually. So, okay, here you go. You see, it more than doubled inside, which that is absolutely perfect. What I wanna do first, here. What I want to do first is punch it, right? Gonna punch the air out. Make sure right now my surface is clean. Everything here needs to be super clean, especially if you have granite. We're gonna put this here and have your flour next to you because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna knead it and we're just gonna shape it. All right, so here we go. We're gonna start here. We cut one of the pieces. Cover the other half. Cover the other half. Okay, so I have four strands here and I am not gonna be the one to teach you how to braid because I am not good at it, but I'm just gonna make this first one and I still have the other half here under the towel, okay? First one, off we go. Okay, so what we're doing the second challah, I wanna tell you the secret to making a very good challah. It's a lot of practice. So you're gonna have to make a lot of halot in order to be able to find the perfect recipe for you and the best way to manipulate the dough for you. Okay, so now we have both of the halas already here. So what we're gonna do next is we need to let them rise another hour. If you have an oven like mine that you have the proof option, you can put them on cover like that for another hour. If you don't have that option in your oven, 
you just need to cover them with a the plastic and then a towel that is loose, not as heavy as this one. The only thing that you need to do is to make sure that air doesn't go inside and you just want to cover them loosely. And in an hour, we're gonna be ready to bake it. An hour has passed. I'm taking these ones out of the oven. Remember the oven was off and it was on proof. So what I'm gonna do now, because it's time to glaze them or brush them, I'm gonna keep them vegan, this one. I don't wanna use any eggs for this one. And last time I used the maple to baste them and it was really delicious. So we're gonna have a plate, maybe like a spoon of maple syrup. And we're gonna use some uh, non-dairy milk, just a little bit. Then use your brush to mix it. And why do you wanna use your brush? because that will soften all the bristles. Because you know, sometimes when you have a brush that is too strong, you're gonna puncture your bread and all the, all the air is just gonna go out, okay? So this is how it's supposed to look like. So let's start with the first one. Now we are heating the oven already for maybe like half an hour. I put it at 350 degrees because we're going to be baking those slowly, 350 Fahrenheit. If you want to sprinkle some sesame, you can do it too. Careful. Both ready to go in the oven at 350 degrees. This is after 22 minutes in the oven. So just set it on a cooling rack. Then you're gonna be able to take it out and make sure it's cooked well underneath. 